Hey you guys, this is Nathan. I'm going to show you today how to put a border around a subject in a photo. And I'm going to be showing you how to do it completely for free using Photoscape X. But this tip that I'm going to be sharing with you guys can be used on a lot of other software such as GIMP, such as Photoshop, um, and others as well. But this is how I got this done. This is kind of the finished product. and what's awesome is the amount of control you get at the end of your project because here I can change the distance of the glow I can change the amount of blur that is on it I can change the angle of which it is the blur is kind of facing I'm also able to change the color to whatever I want whether it's red or green or whatever kind of mood I'm trying to set for the uh, photo plus Photoscape X is awesome because it also allows you to have different stickers, able to put in different text, able to put, you know, the same kind of drop shadow, the same kind of text as well, being able to go into here and to say, oh yeah, what kind of color do I want this image to be? And saying, oh yeah, do I want it to be a blue or do I want to use some kind of a gradient? And, you know, you can change the angle, the gradients, things like that. So there's so much here. But how do we get the background on the subject? So. There are two ways to do this. There's the simple way and then there's the precise way that gives you this kind of flexibility at the end of your project. So let's begin. I've already saved this total uh, photo as a project file so then I can always come back to it later at this exact spot where I can still continue to go and edit these different things and stuff like that. So I'm going to close out of it and I'm going to go and just drop the image into the editor. So we drop the image in here's just the plain Jane normal image I can go over to here to magic color or I can go into here to film and I can make it whatever kind of look or feel that I want it to be um, but for me I'm just gonna stick it here uh, just at the original but make sure to edit your photo completely before you go in to this next step in the process so this is where you can split off to the easy way or the hard way let me show you the easy way first Go over here to tools, go to draw, and then what's awesome in here is that I'm able to zoom in on a certain part of the image, and I'm able to start drawing my outline right here. So I am drawing, and I'm drawing the outline of his shirt. And you know, you got to be pretty careful. You know, I actually have a drawing tablet that's able to help as well, because then you're actually able to use an actual pen. And it works pretty well. So if you're wanting to really do a lot of doodling and stuff, I would recommend you looking into picking something like that up. But as you can see, you know, it takes a little bit of time. You gotta be kind of patient. If you mess up on a section, like you accidentally like mess something up badly, you can go back to subtract and you can just use it as a eraser and you erase all that stuff out. It makes it pretty easy. What's also cool is there is a more button right here. You're able to go over here to the opacity, able to see how it's going to be blended. You guys can mess around with that if you want, but just wanted to let you know that that's there. One thing that you also will need to know is that you will need to select your color at the very beginning. Make sure you select the exact color you want because you can't really go back and change it very easily. I wish they would add a function where I can go and make an edit to that, but at this point you do have to select your color at the very beginning and halfway through you could change the color if you want to change it to a different part that you want to do a different color so totally your call on that but just select it first so I'm going to continue whoops that's on the subtract tool still uh, continue going up and around and you can pretty well figure out what this is going to look like at the end of it you know it just takes a little bit of time you got to go up you got to go around you got to figure out how to do all this stuff um, so I'm going to just finish up this last bit pretty quick for you guys. But no, this is really helpful for people who are making, whether it's a YouTube video or something, and they're saying, oh man, I really wish that I could figure out how to, you know, make my thumbnail stand out. And one way is just to put a white border or something on it because it does show that, you know, you maybe put more time into the video. It's more eye catching for someone who's watching a video. Um, but there you go. You have the border around it. It looks really nice. You can then put your text there and all that stuff and you've got it made. Um, one kind of bonus tip that I want to share with you guys. There's some really cool tools 
in here in that tools um, uh, pull down here with all these different stuff one thing that I would really encourage you guys to check out is the scatter tool so let's say I want to scatter stars or something I can click here and I can scatter stars throughout the image like that's kind of cool you know you don't have to do that but it looks kind of neat um, you know you can change the colors to be whatever you want you can um, hopefully there's a color of yeah you can increase the size of these stars you can change the opacity of course the blend mode as well but whether it's dots whether it's stars it's things that you can do to fill more of the image and I think that's pretty cool I could even go back to my finished project and add a few of those in as well but just let you know there's some cool tools out there to make things look pretty neat and pretty special so that is the easy way to do it and literally two three four minutes and you're done not too hard um, you know you just go to insert later and you just add your text and you're basically done so congratulations that's the easy way now the slightly more complicated way but kind of the correct way to do things if you wanted to have more control over your end product is to go over here to the cutout tool so we were in the editor click over here to the cutout tool drop your photo in and then what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the background. How do you cut the background out of an image? This is how to do that. You have these different tools that are used to help cut uh, those things out. You have the magic eraser where I can click on this and like what I'm clicking on, it's a gray color. I click on that and it's going to remove the gray colors that are close to it or that are similar to it. So I click it and it got rid of a good amount of the door. I click down here, more of the door gone. Click over here, oh man, that white's gone. Hey, I click here, that's gone. And the thing is, you can actually turn the tolerance up a little bit more. So like, as you can see right here, like in this part, you can see that it's not really getting right up to my to the hair on my head. You know, it's close, but it's not all the way there. That's because it's trying to be careful not to take away too much. So what I can do is I can just edge uh, and just turn the tolerance up a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, to the place where it's exactly where I want to be and actually that's pretty good now let me zoom out to make sure it didn't like go and rip like another part of my face off or like my shirts gone or something like that kind of got to be careful to make sure it looks good but you know you can make those changes and change that tolerance and stuff um, in this case that worked out super super well you can hit apply and then that will save where you're at you can always go back and undo but it's important to uh, have those tools available to you. There's also the lasso tool. That's where you can draw a circle and it will remove everything in that circle. Kind of useful, uh, kind of quirky to use sometimes, but it's helpful if you have like some straggler stuff like this stuff. I can just draw a circle real quick and I can, re I can remove a ton. The brush is kind of your best friend at the end of the day when you're trying to remove just those last few things that are just annoying that you just can't really get rid of any other way. Because um, there's only so much you can do with the brush tool. If you do accidentally take out too much, like in this case where I took out some of my shirt, I can go and uh, hit the subtract and I can put that stuff back in. You know, kind of useful, kind of helpful. Just keep playing around with it, try it out, see what you can do. I hope I didn't just remove my hair there. Ooh, I did. Whoops. Uh, let me go back to the tolerance level, add some of that back in, take some of that away, more back in. All right, that looks pretty good over here to the brush Ooh. let me hit undo let me hit erase and there you have it looks pretty nice so ooh, looks like I must have some stragglers here this teal line shows the outline of what's left in the image so I can see that there must be some straggler stuff on this side because it's not all the way next to my shirt at the moment you know you can zoom in and just look real carefully see what's left over don't want anything silly to be still in the photo at the end of the day I kinda see that there's some black in here that I want to have removed eh. it's gonna be really hard <laughs> it's gonna be really hard um, sometimes when you get some of these things that just get really challenging a way to help you is to actually bring back that part of the image go back to the magic eraser tool and remove it turn the tolerance up and just 
see if you can just crush that and get rid of that. So there you go. I think I did a much better job getting that corner now. So I think that looks pretty good. And then you can go and hit save and you have saved the background of the image. Let me just make sure I saved something unique so then I'm able to find that exact one. All right, so we did that, we got that completed. Now, back to the editor. We're going to go back to the editor. Here's the original photo. Let's just go and revert back all the way to the beginning. What's awesome is now I'm able to insert that photo back in here, but then I have the options. Like right now, this is just an image. But if I go over here and I select, hey, here is the new uh, you know, subject in the photo. You know, you're putting it back in. You go to scale, hit 100 so you know it's the exact same size. Line it up the best that you can. You know, zoom in, see where you're at. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, I think that's pretty good. So you get it in, but now it's layered. There's that photo, but then there's the photo behind it. You're able to go over here and hit that drop shadow. You can make that drop shadow look however you want it to look. Uh, you can make it the distance however you want, you make that blur out. So now you can see there's more separation between the foreground and the background of the photo. You can see how now if I go in here, not to frame, not to frame, but to film, I can make those changes and those edits, things like that, to make that background look cool, but then I can stand out and like really shine. Um, uh, especially like if I were to go back here to like the edit and or like to the color here and I go to darken and I darken this image I can really make myself stand out in this photo and really make sure that it um, really hits home you know that I'm the foreground that's the background here we go um, really makes things a lot more punchy a lot more dynamic and I'm actually liking this edit more than the edit that I was showing you guys in the beginning so at this point, you know, what do you do? Well, uh, make sure you get whatever color you want, exactly the color you want it to be. So, you know, pick what you'd like. You also have the color wheel where you can um, go and select whatever you'd want. Uh, you can also go and select any color, like the color of my shirt, if you want to do that. You can select the color of my eye, if you want to do that too. I don't know if that technically helps with like the coherency of the photo, but you know, you can select whatever color you want. Uh, then just go over here to text. You can put your text in. You can pick whatever font you want. You can download your own fonts and install them. Um, you can also go back here to the tool if you want to add a few other things. Uh, one thing I do want to note in here is that when you click on this, it shows just the background, you like that image that's in the back to what's images in the front. And that's because it's only editing what's on the very back. Um, it's kind of a limitation that you have to do here. The only way to actually edit that front picture and get different things in there is uh, to save it out and then to bring it back into Photoscape X. But um, in my personal opinion, this is the best way to put a border around um, someone. You know, you can turn the blur down so it looks a lot harder. Um, so if I'm doing just a white blur, I can make it look a lot harder to the point where it does look uh, just like an outline. And uh, of course with the angle you can make it look however you want. But you guys I hope this was helpful for you uh, to be able to make those edits to make those changes. Make sure to save your project out as a project file so then like I can hop into here and open back up that original project that I was showing you guys I can go to edit and now I can say oh wow I took the time to make all this stuff in here but you know I would really love to see you know maybe a different filter or a different design or something like that and I want you guys to be able to have those tools available for you so you're able to make the images that you want the thumbnails you want and that you have the tools needed if you have any more questions about Photoscape X or anything else uh, in the world of photo editing, feel free to let me know. This has been Nathan Collins, photo editing. Have a great rest of your day.